So last Sunday, we started a short series leading up to Easter, thinking about the things that Jesus carried. Can you remember what that was last week? Yes. We thought about the crown of thorns, Steve in his garden. It's great. And it was fantastic to see all the photos of people making theirs afterwards. Thanks so much for sending them in. Now, the crown of thorns was something that people could see Jesus carrying. And for us, it's a reminder of the wounds caused by the ridicule and mockery. And the crown also reminds us that Jesus is now king. This week, we're going to think about something that Jesus carried that we can't see. The Bible tells us that Jesus carried our sorrows. And Fian's going to read from a part of the Bible in the Old Testament, written many centuries before Jesus was even born, and tells of uh, his suffering and death in amazing detail. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. It was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Thanks for you. Jesus carried our sorrows. We're going to think about those verses and all that Jesus did for us. In a few moments, you're going to need either a basket or uh, maybe you, instead you have a bowl. You'll need some pieces of paper and a, and a pencil or a pen that you can draw or write with. And then after that, we'll need a, a piece of bread. So if you want to, you can pause the video right now and go and get them so you'll be ready as we reflect on these verses. Now, do you remember how that reading described the suffering Messiah? A man of sorrows. He knew all about grief, the deepest grief. We see this being lived out by Jesus in his earthly life. There were times where he experienced great sadness. Uh, one moment was when he, one of his best friends, Lazarus, died and his body was placed in a tomb and the Bible says that Jesus wept. Um, he knew what it was to grieve. Um, and then another time the Bible records he uh, looked out over Jerusalem and uh, as he thought about the different ways in which people had rejected God, turned from him and even killed some of his messengers, uh, Jesus felt this great sadness over how far away people were from God. But in his suffering and death on the cross, we're told that Jesus carried our weakness, our pain. He was weighed down by the suffering and sorrows of human beings, men and women, boys and girls like you and me. He carried, he carried our suffering and sorrow. He also carried all that we know is wrong in our lives. I don't know about you, but can you remember a time when somebody else carried you? What was it like? I can remember a time when our children were really small and uh, they'd fallen asleep on a car journey. And as they were coming to, um, uh, when we'd arrived, they'd be too sleepy, too tired to walk on into the house. And so sometimes fast asleep still, I lifted them out of their car seats and I carried them into the house. I did for them what they couldn't do for themselves. Jesus, we're told, carried our pain and our weakness. He was weighed down by our sorrow and suffering. Um, he even carried the weight of our rebellion against God. He took it all to the cross and uh, there he exchanged uh, our pain for his healing, our grief for his comfort, our weakness for his strength. Our, our wrongdoing for his forgiveness. Just think for a moment, what kind of love is prepared to carry our grief and sorrows, the things we're really sad about, the things we feel ashamed about and guilty about? What kind of love is prepared to carry them in this way? Love carried our load. Jesus, as he went to the cross, did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Love, his love, took all 
our things and, and replaced them all and gave us joy and hope and comfort and healing. Here we've got an empty basket and I said you might want some paper and some pencils or a pen at this point. What you can do is uh, draw a picture or write something down that's caused you pain, made you feel unhappy, really sad and place it in the basket. Think about something you've lost, uh, something that makes you sad right now. With everything changing in the world at the moment, there's a number of things, several things you might be wanting to pause and write down. Maybe it is because you miss seeing friends right now, uh, that loss of seeing the people that you love meeting. Sad that a special event has had to be changed or cancelled. Um, really sad because a loved one is in a care home or in hospital and you just can't go and visit them and do those things with you. Jot down each of those things. That, that have caused sorrow or sadness and place them in the basket. As well as that, you may want to um, think about everything you know that's wrong in your life at the moment. Things that you've done or said or thought. Maybe you could just draw a cross on a piece of paper to represent those things. And as you think about them, place that within the basket or within the bowl, whatever it is that you have. Now, imagine that load. Imagine Jesus being weighed down by the weight of all our sorrows and everything we know is wrong in our lives, doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. Imagine love carrying your load. Let's pray, thinking about the things that we've placed in the basket. Join me as we pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you carried my sorrows, the things that make me really sad, the things that hurt my pain, my guilt. Thank you for taking them to the cross. Thank you for replacing them with your comfort, your strength, your healing, your forgiveness, your peace and your joy. I receive all those things now from you and I choose to follow in the way you lead me today and tomorrow and the next day. I need your help and so I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit that he may help me live with this new hope and this new outlook and this new joy in you. I ask it in your name. Amen. Our frontline focus this week involves people who work for the NHS whose jobs are being changed. Uh, let's hear from Alison Graham. Hi, I'm Alison and usually I work as a children's speech and language therapist. Uh, beginning of this week, um, I was notified that I, along with quite a large number of my colleagues, um, including Alison Cox, who also worships here, uh, we were told that we're going to be redeployed as part of the wider NHS workforce um, and we're going to be supporting adult services locally. Um, so this week I've been working through the list of online training that we've been sent. Uh, next week um, on Tuesday I have a face-to-face -face training day and we're waiting to hear when we will start but expecting this month's work to be very different from what we usually do. Alison and I would value your prayers. Um, we would appreciate prayers for peace while we're waiting. Some of the training has felt a little out of our comfort zones and it would be easy to be anxious. Um, also that when we start our new role, that we would know God's purpose and presence in that environment and that we would be able to care for the people there uh, in the way that he would have us do so, both patients and staff, however uncertain we might feel. And also for our protection, um, protection for us, our families, um, but also for all our friends and colleagues who are also being redeployed. Thank you.
Father, we pray for Alison and for other key workers whose jobs are being reshaped and changed, putting them in um, very different and perhaps difficult situations. Uh, Lord, give them the peace that they need, uh, the patience in learning new things. Uh, God, the wisdom uh, as they sit about serving uh, the most vulnerable in this situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'd usually be sharing communion together today, a meal that Jesus shared with his disciples before he died. Um, but how do you share communion online, since the idea is that it's a shared meal? And so instead, we're going to pause and we're going to take some bread and remember all that Jesus did for us on the cross and give him our thanks. And here's a chance to think about all those in Christchurch uh, sharing in this moment right now. So I'm going to ask you to pick up the, the bread now. And as you do that, just think about all that Jesus carried for you. As you break this bread in half, think about all that Jesus went through for each of us. As you eat the bread now, think about how Jesus came back to life. How he gives his life to us to forgive us, to heal us, restore us to God, to give us life to the full. And say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father for giving us your son. So we bring ourselves uh, close to God in this way right now. Simon's going to play a song that you'll recognize. It says, this is my God, the servant king. And it says, my heavy load he chose to bear. From heaven you came, helpless babe Entered our world, your glory veiled Not to be served, but to serve And give your life, that we might live This is our God, the servant king calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king there in the garden of tears my heavy load he chose to bear his heart when sorrow was torn Yet not my will, but yours he said This is our God, the servant king He calls us now to follow him To bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king come see his hands and his feet the scars that speak of sacrifice hands that flung stars into space to grow nails surrendered this is our God the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king so let us learn how to serve And in our lives we call Him Each other's needs to prefer For it is Christ we serving 
This is our God, the servant king, calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant And so finally, here's something that uh, children and young people can get involved in over the next week. Hi, I'm Sam. Hi, I'm Becca. And I'm here to tell you about a competition for children and youth. We are asking you to recreate the Easter story in any way you like. You could do it on the computer, you could do a cartoon animation. You could draw a cartoon on some paper and take a picture. Through drama, get all your family together. You could do a stop motion animation. Now, in order to enter the competition, you need to send your entry, either in video or picture form, to either myself or to Sam by Easter Monday, okay? And then we're gonna gather them all, we're gonna judge them, and we're gonna give out the results on the 19th of April. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you for joining with us today. Uh, we'd encourage you again to uh, light a candle and say a prayer this evening at seven o'clock. We know it's not dark now, the clocks have changed, but uh, is still a symbol of the light of Christ at this really important time. So join us at seven o'clock this evening. We'll be gathering Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrected life of Jesus. And uh, we'll post some details of a Good Friday service sharing with other churches in Welling Garden City. You can also um, access our virtual Christchurch quiz every Wednesday at seven o'clock and you can see details from the email um, about how to access that. Um, but as we, as we finish, let me uh, say a blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.